Today we are making these two chamfer cutting tools. Chamfer cutting tools? We're going to make these bevel cutters. Both of these are capable of cutting on a top edge and a bottom edge. We'll start with the arbor for what I'm calling the reversible style. I initially turn the shank down to the desired size, 20 millimeters. Now we need to add some features on here, a step and a taper. I put effort into indicating this 45 degree angle accurately, then I turn the taper. When it comes to countersinking, I find that running at the absolute lowest speed of my lathe seems to give me good results, minimum chatter. Yes, the lathe power is disconnected. That's the bottom. I'm going to be using a key and keyway in order to transmit torque to the cutter head. So I'll just pop this guy out a bit further and edge fine on the shank. So as it turns out this is my best end mill I've got in this size and it's a <laughs> one flute. Let's stubbornly push on. What could go wrong? Due to this end mill being almost destroyed I'm taking this very slow and easy. I think I'd better order a new end mill. <laughs> Got the job done. So did I mention I'm making two cutters? I'm sort of going to make both parts at the same time. I'll make the shank of one of the tools first so I can hold on to that. I'd call that a success. Just need to make a more permanent version. Now while in this setup I could add a bevel to this. Eh, uh, I'm not going to. Too late now. I've deliberately cut a bigger taper than what I need. Now I need to face this down until I get to the right diameter on this small end. This shoulder is right on the minor diameter of the taper that I want. Now I just need to keep blending this taper in until I remove that step. Now I'm drilling and boring to accept the arbor that we made earlier. Now I just need to cut a bevel in here and we'll be able to locate that down on it. My compound's still set up at the original 45 degrees. Put the time and effort into setting this compound at the 45 degree angle that I want. And to make sure my tapers match, I'm going to make it my personal challenge not to touch this angle for the rest of the job. This could lead to some interesting setups and we'll see how that goes. The axis of the compound needs to be that way. It's currently more that way. But I think I'm going to flip the tool around, run the lathe in reverse and cut this side and see how we go. Right. Chuck needs to run forwards. Ideally I want to cut all of these tapers in the one setup and there's the internal back taper on the back side of this part. The problem is access. I need to undercut inside the bore somehow so then I can bore at an angle into that undercut. I should be going to the groove at the back and then I'm going to work my way forwards to cut the taper. That is pretty damn solid. That's actually quite a good fit. I'm using 4140 steel for the fastener. I got this from Tyne Valley Metals and there's a link to them below. I'm using 4140 for its strength. The square flange is subject to higher stress and I don't want it to snap off. I'll explain why I designed the fastener this way later in the video. To cut this thread we could use a die or we use our quick change gearbox. Side note, I plan to do a narrated series of the quick change gearbox at some point soon. Stay tuned. Whoop. Could 
got our fastener. One problem though. Well, that brooch is a bit too big. Looks like I have to make a new brooch bit. For me, dremels seem to spin the wrong way. So if I come at it from this side, all the sparks go down rather than all over everything. Now that I've dished the front of this tool, I can grind a hex to size. The dish radius I put in is a little bit large for this 5mm brooch. I'm still trying to figure out brooch geometry. If you want to build a cool tool and want to support the channel, I have plans available for this rotary brooch. Link below. Now I need to make a tapered washer. As with the fastener, I'll explain why in a bit. I've added my counterbore feature in the front. Now I want to add a groove in the back here. This groove enables me to cut my taper by giving my tool somewhere to go. I'm maintaining the 45 degree angle from earlier, so this operation is awkwardly working from the far side of the lathe. For ease of work hiding, I've brought this over to the mag chuck on the surface grinder. Yes, you could do this in the lathe, no problem. Looks like the precision parts launcher remained tame today. Let's do a trial assembly. So you might be wondering, this fastener, why did I choose to make my own? And why did I make this this flat head as opposed to countersunk? Might be overthinking it here. Thread is not gonna run completely true. If the head is countersunk with the taper, fastener is not completely central. That could influence how this washer seats, which will then influence how the actual cutter head sits on here and might tweak it off to the side. By having this flat surface pulling against the washer, all the force is axial, and that means that this cutter head seats on this top taper. And this is the important one that sets it running true. This washer just serves as an adapter from a taper to a flat, and the fastener just pulls it axially. So remember how I was making two tools? We used the offcut from earlier, and this will form the body of the one piece cutter. This cutter is in one fixed piece with a 45 degree cutting edge on the top and the bottom. Seven point one four five gauge block stack. Bit over a millimetre left. We have our two types of cutter heads. Now to put the cutting geometry on it. Trying to cut these properly is going to present quite a few challenges. I'm going to get the cutting geometry right. And I probably could do it all with collet blocks in a vise. But I think I'm going to switch over to the dividing head. So I think that's going to make things easier. This is now indicated true in the four jaw. The geometry of this isn't straightforward. I'm trying to fit a 60 degree tool into this 90 degree angle. Here we go, this is analog meets digital. I need to indicate this into the right angle. So I've got my dial indicator on the side of this guy, which I trust. I'm gonna move along 50 mil, and then compare this measurement versus what I work out through trigonometry. So I'm actually choosing to do this at full depth at the bottom, and then I'll step in the required amount, and then we'll be right. On this one piece cutter, there'll be two sets of carbide inserts. One arranged on the top 45 degrees, and the other on the bottom 45. Each matching pair of inserts can be cut in the same setup with a dividing head. There's the underside cutting edges. I need to cut two more in here, but while I'm set up on this angle, I need to put my screw holes in. So I'll set that back down flat. Due to limited clearance, I can only spot drill with a center drill and with crazy stick out. I felt the need to spot drill because of the tiny drill that I'm gonna use next, which is also gonna have lots of stick out. And this means there's a high chance that the drill will wander. I've designed this so the hole position is biased ever so slightly towards the vertical face. And this will allow the screw to pull the insert hard against that vertical face. 
and give us a more rigid setup. These holes need a chamfer before tapping and a centre drill is the right size to reach. Now we need to cut the other two faces on here and turn it the other way. I want to show my method for edge finding on these edges here. This face is not parallel to the axis of the machine. So I need to edge find on this surface here. I need to get this portion of the tool pretty much on the center line so that I know I'm absolutely touching on the crest of this arc here. I'm going to wind the table backwards and forwards and incrementally move in the X direction until I finally get this tool to kick off. And to find the distance of the hole in the Y direction, I indicate off the vertical cut face. It's critical that this hole dimension is the right distance off this surface. That way the insert seats against this face. Now that we've made our one piece cutter, we can now make the cutting geometry for the reversible cutter. A bit of time indicating this in and we are good to go. These operations are the same as before, so I'll skip through them. Okay, so I've tapped these for M2.5 and given them a bit of a polish and I think they've turned out alright. And if you're wondering what all the gunk is on these, turns out you shouldn't clean something with acetone when wearing a band-aid. Just a heads up. I did want to cold blue these, but my cold blue solution is contaminated and it's not giving me great results. I'll rust blue these in the future. There's a couple of links to people who have done it down below. Go and check them out. All right, let's give these a go. Okay, you're about to see our first ever live test. I've got no idea if this tool's gonna work. We're gonna find out together. Let's see how much we can push this at the highest speed. I'd cut a decent bevel on there. I'm quite happy with this. Both sets of cutters seem to line up on centre, so I'm able to cut a nice V like this. I am getting a bit of faceting along here, so that's me feeding too fast, and also I'd say one of the cutters is sticking out further than the other one. So there is a bit of a skip mark to this. Let's have a look at the other cutter. Tell you what, other than the faceting, that finish is absolutely beautiful. So now if we want to cut the bottom edge, we just flip our cutter over. Flipping the cutter over also flips the direction. We have to feed from the other way. And we have to run this in reverse. So we can do light chamfer cuts. Now let's do something a bit heavier. Tell you what, these tools are really fun to make. I don't think a lot of people will want these, but if you do, I do have plans available. Now, I'm definitely not saying that this is the best way to make these. If you want a really simple bevel cutting tool, you could easily make kind of a D-bit style, or you could use a countersinking bit. This might be limited in how hard you can drive it though. The other thing you can do is get a 45 degree horizontal milling cutter, and you could turn it into pretty much this style fairly easily. I wanted to make mine with replaceable carbide inserts, so that's why I did it this way. Thanks for watching.